Hello everyone and welcome to my humble abode again. Today I have for something slightly different I would like to do a tutorial. I don't really like doing tutorials because there's so many on the on the YouTube already. I think this is a bit of a waste of time but and they're always done by people who feel better than me like unstable voltage but in this particular case I would like to show you some item ducts. And I have prepared some item ducts here but first of all, let's go and start to make some. What we need for item ducts, I'm just going to start from here. We need one hardened glass surrounded by two tin ingots. So the first thing we need to do is to make some hardened glass. And to do that, we need obsidian and lead. I shall show you why in a second. Right. In here I put the obsidian and this is a hopper. That hopper feeds this casting basin. And in here I put lead. And I think it uses half um, an ingot for each obsidian to make hardened glass. What happens is, I will also need the clock. What happens is, the lead will melt, and then I will feed the lead into this casting basin here by applying the clock here. And there's rather annoying Enderman somewhere, or an Ender Lee, I think they're called. It's actually not very far away, probably outside. Right, there it goes. You can see that the uh, this casting basin is now full. It's filled another obsidian in here, and as soon as that disappears down here into a, a lower hopper, it fills it up again. And we should just quickly go downstairs. And you should see these coming out here. Going then going into these item ducts, going the impulse item ducts are faster, and they will end up in this chest here. And then oh, we've got five, in a few seconds we should get six. Here he goes, six. Okay, now what we're going to do with those, we need some uh, tin ingots. So, what we do is we put hardened glass in the middle and tin, tin ingots on each side and that makes six item ducts for each particular item which is plenty now with these item ducts we're going to make them impulse item ducts and how we do that is we basically add um, yellow stone to them here we are in fact it doesn't, it's not very clear from this recipe how you do it I think, ah here we go so you take the item duct, energised glowstone, and it will come out as an impulse item duct. So let's go and do that. Back to the workshop, because down the bottom here, did I bring with me, I forgot to bring with me the glowstone. Here we have the glowstone. Unfortunately, you need nearly always to go to the nether to get glowstone. But you can actually find it when you're um, mining. If you've managed to find the right type of beehive. And you, you see now I've put the these across here. What happens is they, the item ducts go into the here. The energised glowstone is coming from the magma crucible and making item ducts, impulse item ducts. And as you can see, I think it does around about. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many, how much it needs. Let's go back to the recipe. Maybe it tells us. 200 milli, milli bar, um, milli buckets. So that's a, a fifth of a bucket. And I think each close down is a quarter of a bucket, something of that order. Right. 
Now we have 24 impulse item blocks. I can leave the ghost zone doing its thing. Back to the table. What we can also do with impulse item blocks is we can actually add one silver and that makes a vacuum impulse item duct. It's actually important to do it in this order. If you try doing it in the other order, in the sense of making a vacuum uh, item duct and then putting glowstone in it, it just simply turns back to an impulse item duct. So here we have a dense impulse item duct and a vacuum impulse item duct. Now, to be useful, we need to create a servo and some filters. So let's do that next. So, servo. The one I'm going to make is a reinforced servo because these, if you look at down here, you get a lot more options. You can get metadata, NBT, or dictionary, and mod owner. So you have a lot more sorting capacity with these. The only difference between um, these and the signal and the resonant servos is the speed that they're actually extracting. I think there's no XO speed boost times two times one. So they just go faster. But for our purposes, we don't care about that. So, for one of these, we need two electrum mingers, hardened glass, redstone, which we have plenty of, and iron nuggets. So let's get, first of all, some iron nuggets. Here we have some iron nuggets. Let's leave those there. Now, we also need some signalum. Now, signalum, let's go back to the recipe again, is made from a sig Electrum grit, which is made from gold dust and silver dust. I say so. So it's electrum ingots we're making. So we just need one of those in a shapeless crafting, it'll make this dust. So what we need is to just put some, I think, silver and gold. We get electrum grit. All we now need to do is to smelt that electrum grit in the induction furnace will be fine. And here we have our electrum in ingus. And now, this has changed from the normal type to immersive engineering. This was the new mod that was added in 1.9.0. Downstairs again. So now we have enough to make the three types of um, fill item duct. Um, well, I suppose there's sort of there's three types: so a server, a filter, and a retriever. So we should first of all make the servos. They're made with one redstone in the middle, and I think it was redstone in the middle. Two nuggets. Actually, let's do that like that. And if I'm not mistaken, it was hardened glass at the top here. So we have two reinforced servos. Now to make a filter is exactly the same, in this case it's just paper. And we have two reinforced filters. And the last one's the retriever. Now the retriever is the hardest one to make because it requires an ender eye. Now what have I only got? Let's have only got one casting to uh, one crafting station here which is a bit of a shame don't mind what we need is one blaze uh, powder and an ender pearl you can make an ender pearl with ender fragments just like that and then when you put the blaze powder beside the ender pearl you get an ender eye if you don't need you don't need to go to the nether to make this you can actually use a cinder pearl and a cinder pearl makes a blaze powder just by putting it through. You'll find cinder pearls in dry deserty areas. Right, now back to our crafting. And this time I should have a retriever. I've got that wrong. What if I missed out? Let's go back and see. We want this one. Ah, it's not. It's no longer iron. It's enderum. 
nuggets and I showed you how to make Enderim in the previous video about how to make a Tesseract so I won't show you that again so, so all I have to do is change these two here and put in two Enderim nuggets and here we have two retrievers so the next thing I want to make is a um, something called a red print now a red print is two pieces of paper and a glow and a redstone and that makes a red print and you can use this for copying its settings so what I want to do is to copy the settings I've got on um, a, f I think a filter bes beside the tesseract that I'm using to micromanage the um, this filter here so this filter basically is a whitelist of um, redstone, emeralds, lap lapis, and diamonds. The idea is when when the um, the quarry detects one of these items, it stops the um, it stop it stops the uh, tesseract, so it doesn't dig anymore. So I then go and trundle off to the, the quarry and do some micromanagement and dig it up with the soft touch, the silk touch hem. Um, hammer and you'll see that these are whitelisted and everything else is blacklisted and it doesn't it's also got used metadata which means in fact in these cases you'll see here's metadata on the lap on the lapis it's got a colon 4 and the colon 4 is the metadata part so anything with a 351 colon 4 will be pulled in if I turn this off it won't use that metadata so it'll put any, pull anything that's a 351 of that number and then what happens is here I've got a, a, a simple um, pipe trans wooden transport pipe and connected to a gate and the gate basically says if there's anything in the inventory of the chest it then turns the signal redstone signal on and then that sets the signal here comes down to this tesseract and the tesseract is programmed to go off if the signal goes high so it's only enabled when the signal's low, which means off. So at the moment it's off, therefore it's enabled. I shall demonstrate that. If I put anything in here at all, it'll go on. Signal goes, and this goes grey, so it's now disabled. Obviously not really good to put my land glider in there, but never mind. So, what I was going to do was to copy the settings of this filter. I simply right-click it, shift-right-click I think, and it goes ping. And that means it's now got the settings. So if I go and have a look here, press E and have a look at this, it says red print duct filter, shift for details. It doesn't unfortunately tell you what's in the filter, but it tells you it's an item duct filter. So I'm going to use that now for my demonstrate, my tutorial here. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the, the filters to here. So let's go here filter five try that and I'm going to do it on this chest as well so now I apply the filter here and here and if I now have a look at these you'll see that they have got the same rules as before so use metadata and this filter is a more advanced filter than the previous one so we have these extra uh, well, I suppose conditions and it's the same on this one so now when I come along here and put some redstone in this chest which I have and then apply to that a, um, a servo what the servo will do will it will extract items out of this chest and what it will do is it, it's off at the moment and they will probably go at them I think this is a 64 so it's a bad example I probably need to go and get some more redstone let's go and get some more redstone because it's easy to do let's take four stacks here we are again let's put these four stacks into here now, now we have five stacks so when i turn the um this on and i can do that with a lever let's get a lever out of my collection here so i put a lever here turn it on 
and you'll see these items go down and what they are doing is they're going the shortest route so in this case they're going straight into this chest turn it off again and of course you can then program these at the moment it's high enabled which means when the signals on from the switch which is beside it it will turn on you can also do low enabled as I did for the um, tesseract or ignored which means it's always on so if you look at that now it's always on low enabled is on because the signal is low turn it off signals high and the one we want at the moment is the high enabled one so let's go back now and get uh, redstone so what I'm now going to do is to demonstrate what happens when we use um, vacuum impulse ducts and dense impulse ducts what they do is they make the distance longer or shorter so at the first time everything went into this chest if I now take this section out and the crescent hammer is a great way of doing this right click shift right click it's gone I can now put in its place um, let's put in the dense item duct because that will then make force it to go this will be the long way okay now we turn these on what will should happen as they go into the other chest interestingly enough they haven't tried to go into this chest so now what we can do here we can remove this and put back the other one impulse item duct yeah number five and go over this side and put the vacuum item duct and the vacuum item duct makes it go shorter and this is green I think so again our items are in this chest And you see straight away they're going the shorter route even though before they went to this chest because this is now shorter and the last part of the puzzle is the retriever now if I come here put the retriever on here what we're going to do is we're going to spread this redstone out into all the chests so let's put in let's put two stacks in here two stacks in here turn this off and put one stack in here now if I come along and turn the retriever on I will use another lever for that what should happen is it should pull the items from the other chests all of the chests except for the one with the server because the server is off this is now empty this is now empty and this is now empty but this has still got the one redstone in so I think that's all I wanted to demonstrate yes I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, bye for now.